the DOD manager immediately punches the button, which puts him in contact with Pacific Recovery Control, Hawaii. Hawaii alerts the captain of the Mason. He swings around and heads for 7-3, making 30 knots. Search aircraft scramble from Okinawa. They will be over the predicted landing point 10 minutes before the spacecraft splashes down. As Gemini 8 begins its seventh and final revolution, weather is excellent in the splashdown area. Gemini 8 sweeps past Ascension Island. Retro fire will come up over Kano, Nigeria. Air-to-ground communications are broken, but the rockets fire right on the nose. The crew begins their descent through the atmosphere. This is the view they will see for a long time, the high peaks of the Himalayas. After these forbidding mountains, the sweep of the Pacific will look friendly and hospitable. Waiting for Gemini 8 are rescue aircraft circling in the landing area, ready to pick up an electronic signal from the spacecraft. Two aircraft from Okinawa were originally assigned here, but five others were quickly alerted and added to the recovery team. When Gemini 8 is only three miles away, a C-54 catches sight of it on the main landing parachute. After that, landing is almost routine, and Gemini 8 landed within two miles of the predicted impact point. The first pararescue swimmer in the water is Airman First Class Neal. Airman Neal is a veteran of combat rescue work and a good man to have on your side. He was quickly followed by two other rescue swimmers. It was early afternoon in the Pacific, but almost 11 o'clock at night in the Atlantic where the USS Boxer had waited. The Mason, three hours away at splashdown, reached the area at 3.17 p.m. local time. Crew and spacecraft, both in good shape, were soon aboard. <laughs> 